Hello, hello, Mordimers here and welcome to another game from semi-finals of Chessable Masters 2020. Uh, I would like to show you the game between uh, Jan Nepomniasi, who's gonna play as white, and Anish Giri, who's gonna play as black. And this is game number one from the third mini-match. The, the first one uh, was won by Nepo, the second one by um, Anish Giri, uh, and this one uh, gonna decide who gonna be in the final. And uh, we had a couple of games. I choose the game number one because it's full of the tactical ideas, missed chances, opportunities, uh, missed draws and all of that stuff. So without further ado, let's see what happened on the board in this exciting game. Uh, we have knight on f3 by Nepo d5, ready opening on the board, e3, knight on f6 and c4. Uh, e6 by Anish Giri. Knight on c3 and now uh, d takes on c4. This is the sideline, uh, not the most popular, however, it's still, of course, playable. We have bishop on c4 and now c5. And Nepo immediately strikes in the center, we have d4, a6 with the idea of b5 and now of course uh, a4 would be very natural move, a castle is also natural but we have very early, very aggressive e4. Uh, and now uh, what to play next by Anish Giri, he immediately takes uh, in the center, so c takes on d4, knight takes on d4 and now bishop on d6 preparing for the castle. Uh, we have bishop on e3 and castle as planned and look at this, white already developed couple of pieces, control the center uh, and only one move for the to the castle uh, you know is needed. Uh, we have rook on c1, still waiting with the castle, and now b5, kicking the bishop, but also uh, making a space for the bishop to develop on this longest diagonal. However, it's very interesting, because Nepo plays bishop on b3, still keeping an eye on e6, uh, and together with the knight... Uh, Black definitely should expect some of the, of the tactical hits here. Uh, Probably bishop on e5 could be the, the good idea here, however, we have bishop on b7 by Anish Giri, uh, and now bishop on e6, and the point is, if f takes on e6, uh, white gonna have very nice game, um, after let's say queen on e7, king on f8, f3, solid center, this is the rook and two pawns for the for the two minor pieces, the position is rather equal, uh, so it's like, you know, preference, what would you, what would you like to play? Uh, but these central pawns definitely are very strong and the game could be very interesting. Uh, however, Anish Giri didn't want to go for so unbalanced position uh, and he said, okay, um, you took my pawn, I'm gonna take your pawn, your move, what you gonna do? Uh, the problem is Nepo was prepared, uh, knight on e4, bishop on e4 and now queen g4. Queen g4, the point, the idea of this move, if black actually takes the, the bishop, it would not work, because queen e4 with the attack on the rook and with the attack on this pawn uh, would probably win the game. So uh, instead we have bishop on g6 solidifying the position and now this bishop is under attack so a bishop on f5 uh, and now we have queen a5 uh, with the check and now instead of going king on e2 we have king on f1 and this actually indicates that white gonna have the attack with the pawn. What to play next? Uh, we have bishop on e5 probably the idea is to exchange this very active centralized knight, uh, however after bishop on g6 and h takes on g6, you cannot take uh, f takes on g6 because uh, there is a trick, queen on e6 winning the piece, so uh, that's not possible, uh, white would win the game with the being piece up, so h takes on g6, uh, and now h4, so attack is coming, and here uh, bishop on d4 was possible, 
by Anish Giri. However, he decided for queen on a2. He grabbed the pawn uh, and he keep the queen on this diagonal. Uh, just if the pawn come to h5 and takes on g6, then this pawn can uh, recapture and there are no tricks anymore as the as the queen, you know, uh, keeps the control on this important diagonal. We have h5 as planned and now white definitely want to open the h file which can be very very dangerous uh, and you cannot play something like g5 because after h6 g6 knight f3 uh, and this bishop is under attack this knight is locked completely locked look at this this knight cannot move anywhere because all the squares are controlled by the uh, by the queen and the rook so it can go to h8 or maybe on, on b2, doesn't really matter because bishop on d4 and what do you play next? Uh, there are some mating ideas there. So probably you would have to go for f6. The problem is after queen on e4, there is another target with the, with the mating ideas. So queen on e4 now. Uh, and this would be too early, but exchanging bishop on b2 is, is winning the game because the queen cannot take it because that is a checkmate. For example, uh, this way and this would be a checkmate. So it's not really possible actually to push the pawn. And uh, this is why we have queen on d5, centralizing the queen. We have h takes on g6, f takes on g6, and now... Uh, knight on e6 attacking the rook but also but the main idea is to remaneuver the knight to g5 so we have rook on e8 knight on g5 this knight now controls h7 and f7 so you see already how dangerous it can be okay this definitely is uh, some mate is coming uh, we have bishop on f6 but the sadly it doesn't prevent a white from winning the game in this position so feel free to pause the video and uh, finish anish giri uh, in this game while i enjoy my cup of tea okay ready so the winning move, there is only one winning move, rook on h8. This is not difficult to spot, there is the, the only one move. King on h8, queen on h4, uh, and after queen on h7, king f8, the winning move, which is more difficult to spot, is actually bishop on c5. And now the point is, um, if bishops uh, go to e7, then bishop on e7, king on e7 or rook doesn't really matter if rook then then of course is a is a checkmate so king on e7 queen g7 uh and that's just just a checkmate okay as the knight controls uh e6 so that's a checkmate uh, and also uh, if you move the rook to e7 it doesn't really work as well because queen on h8 and after queen on h8, bishop e7, and this rook is coming to the to the eighth rank. So, for example, bishop on e7, rook c8, bishop on d8, and now the most you know spectacular way to win is uh, exchange the queens and win this way, or win the queen, of course, and and the game. So this is what Nepo actually missed and instead he played king on g1 uh, and Anish Giri equalized, uh, momentarily he just equalized the game and, and exchanged this dangerous knight. So we have bishop on g5, bishop on g5 and now this knight at least can um, can be developed as well so we have knight on c6 bishop on e3 knight on e5 centralizing the knight you see the situation is completely you know changed immediately we have queen on h3 uh, and now all of this cost anish giri a lot of time uh, he has only 15 seconds on the clock and he have to find uh, the way uh, how to prevent rook on c7 followed by by checkmate on h8 
how would you uh, stop that that plan of white so one of the plan is king on f7 this is this is great plan uh, because you know rook on e7 everything is fine with the position another idea is queen on d7 asking to exchange the the queens queen h7 king f7 and everything is fine with this position as well However, Anish Giri goes for knight on c4, more tricky one, blocking the rook, but it's it's not really, you know, stable. Even b3 can kick the knight, and that's already problematic. However, Nepo plays absolutely the best move in the position. Queen on h7, king on f7, and now bishop h6. So the pawn is under attack. Now, how to defend? Rook on g8 is one of the options, however, rook h4 and this rook gonna come to f4, uh, kick the, the king, another rook gonna join the game uh, and that's gonna be devastating. The engine, uh, believe me or not, uh, recommends actually queen on f5, so, okay, so exchange the queens for the rook uh, and they continue the game, but let's say a rook a on f8. The problem is rook on e1 and the, and the king is trapped. You can try something like knight on d6 uh, and after rook on f4 bring the knight to f5. However, uh, g4 wins this knight and you cannot play anything like a rook on h8 because this pawn is hanging, okay, as the, as the knight is pinned. So this is the problem. So rook on g8 is possible, however, it's very sharp and very, very difficult, especially, you know, uh, with the seconds on the clock for both sides, uh, it's difficult to find all these games. So we have queen on e5, more logical. Uh, rook on h4 is not possible now because simply g5. Now the pawn is defended, so after rook on h3, let's say g4 and the attack just, just collapse and there is no more attack here, the rook has to be remaneuvered and, uh, and so on. So this is why queen on e5 still watching and g7 uh, and preventing any rook on h4. However, now we have rook on h3 rook on h3 and the rook on f3 is coming uh, so rook on g8 bringing more defense to g7 now the queen can move uh, and now we have rook on f3 as planned king on e7 and here what would you play as white this position is completely winning uh, and there is a lot of you know winning ideas here uh, one of the simplest one, of course, is bring the, the, the rook to e3. So first you simply kick the knight and once the knight is moved, uh, then you can bring the, the, the rook to, to c7. You can, you know, move the, the rook to e3. Uh, a lot of ideas here. Uh, the another, maybe even simpler is, uh, maybe not simpler, but queen on g6 is, is also the clean one because black cannot take the bishop. It, it's difficult to spot in the rapid game with the seconds on the clock, but the bishop cannot be taken because rook on f7 and as you see, this is already, uh, this is already losing. This is, this is actually checkmate. So queen on e8 uh, and now after the, the couple of checks, that would be a checkmate. So uh, rook a on f8 probably uh, and now bishop g5. So that's the idea and now win uh, with the with the rooks with tempos, rook on d3, uh, king on c7 and now queen a6 attack from this flank and you cannot take the bishop because after taking a bishop rook c4 and as you see this is already a very very simple pattern checkmate pattern so not possible this is why probably queen on c5 with the attack on the on f2 very active but rook on e3 with the threat of of checking the the king and also the knight is pinned so uh it's not possible to take the rook so that would be also idea rook f7 defending and now simply uh win the knight and the game for example, rook g on f8, uh, b4, and now extra bishop is, of course, uh, enough to win the game. Uh, so, as I said, queen on g6 is, is winning, b3 is also possible. 
However, in this position, Nepo goes for a very simple move, Rook on c4, eliminating the defender of e3 square, which makes a lot of sense. Now he's gonna win the queen. The problem is, it's actually, again, drawing move, drawing move, and Anish Giri uh, have to find the way how to do that. Queen on e1 is the way to go. Queen on e1, and after queen on h2, threefold repetition, or king on h3, and only now b takes on c4, takes the rook. And of course, we have rook on e3, uh, and simply exchange. You even cannot take with the, with the bishop, because rook h8 gonna win the queen and the game. So f takes on e3, uh, and now after king on f6, this bishop is trapped. If the bishop is moved, then of course, uh, exchanging the, the queen. So probably this way uh, would have to be played. Uh, and uh, white gonna have one extra pawn, however, uh, it's it's still drawing. All black has to do is connect the rooks and, and that's gonna be a draw. So that was the way to draw after rook on c4, that, that was the way to draw. However, we have rook on h8 immediately and this is actually losing move and now anything is, is winning here for, for white, a lot of plans. Uh, bishop on g5 can be played, rook on c7 can be played. Uh, Nepo goes for queen on g7 with check. Very simple idea and after queen on g7, don't take the queen, of course don't take the queen, Rook on e4, intermezzo first, you know, extra move, uh, and only then win the queen after that. So in this position, Anish Giri resign, and he's gonna be uh, the bishop down, so of course it's enough to win the game. What a game! A lot of tactical ideas, a lot of missed opportunities, but at the end, Nepo won. That was the first game. The second game was won by Anish Giri, then we had the series of draws, uh, and then we had the blitzes, where first was drawn, uh, and in the last one, uh, Anish Giri managed to win, so uh, he is the finalist. I show you the game which Nepo won, because it was a really exciting game, as you see, uh, I really enjoyed that, all of these ideas, all of these tactical hits, uh, but this is Anish Giri who uh, managed to get to the final, uh, and these are the scores, so as you see, Magnus Carlsen is in the final, uh, and also Anish Giri, after three mini matches, he, he needed, you know, three mini matches, and Anish Giri is in the final, and he's gonna play today uh, against Magnus Carlsen, so grand final, if you don't want to miss uh, the games, the grand final games, uh, you know, stay tuned, press like if you like this video, press unlike if you don't like for some reason, and of course press subscribe, smash the bell button. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.